what's up, man? Uh, they really do. What's up? What's up? What's up? So how's it feel to be back in AC? I feel good. It, it don't matter. They could have put me in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really don't matter where they, where they put me at. I'm, I feel great. I feel great. So I'm getting... I'm, Trying to understand who the real Adrian Bruner is. Is it the guy who talks trash or the guy who was playing with the kids at the PAL, uh, the uh, Boys and Girls Club last time? That, that's all Adrian Bruner. <laughs> it's not a gimmick, it's not a fake, it's not a game. Um, I don't put on a show for the cameras. I, I be myself everywhere I am. You know, some people might take it, take it as a, me just trying to do some act, but this is just me. So it's not just a pump up publicity for a fight or that kind of thing? Or oh, no, no, no. I don't do that. Um, the fight the fight is going to be big regardless because Adrian Bronner is fighting. So, you know, I just, I just you know, whatever whatever energy the fighter give, give off, you know, I just go off of that, you know. Like DeMarco, hell of a guy. Hell of a guy. Um... Nice spirit. When we fought, you know, it was no, it, it was no trash talking nothing. You know, it was just, it was a business. It was a, it was a business deal. You know, I like, I like Demarco a lot. You know, this guy, you know, he comes in, he, he's talking trash like. Now, a lot of people think, when I talk to Abby Plan, they think I'll be playing, but I'll be, I'll be serious. I'm not gonna mess up my money and street fight him or nothing and hurt him before I fight, but but it can get that serious sometimes, you know. Just like the Eloy fight, like you know, he was trash talking too, like. But I wasn't playing. Obviously, he was joking. Like I don't know if this guy, I don't even know the guy, cat what cabbage ga, ca, cabbage. I don't know his name. <laughs> um, but I don't know if he's joking or not. But I'm not playing when I say I'm. A, if I say I'm gonna fuck you up, like that's what it is. I'm serious. So there's no chance of not being motivated for this one. Anymore. I mean, I'm I motivate myself. I'm a self motivator. If you watch me in the gym, it don't matter if I'm by myself or if there's a hundred people around watching me train. I'm gonna train my heart out. I was just wondering, is it tough to, to get up for every single fight? I mean, especially the oh, ones no, where you're kind of no, 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 not not when they paying you the way the way they paying me. Not the, you know, as long as my checks is good, you know, <laughs> I'm always gonna be motivated. And it's not all about the money, you know. I know the money's gonna be there regardless. You know, um, I'm worried about my legacy more so of my legacy. You know, what what I'm gonna leave when I leave the sport. Will Adrian be the best boxer who ever laced up a pair of boxing gloves? That, that, that's what's on my mind. Where do you want to leave? You know, I want to be the best boxer ever. That's why I do things that nobody never done before, you know? I mean, there's only one Adrian Browner anyway, so. Adrian, that's a lot though, you're 23. <laughs> hey, most people start to think about those things when they're 30 and 33. I'm, sm I'm smarter than an average 23 year old. I know they say men uh, mature slower than women or whatever, but you know, I'm not the average 23 year old. So, I, if I understand, you don't watch tapes of your fight every oh, time, do you? Negative. negative. That's useless. It's useless. You know, uh, you can sit there and watch me fight a million times, and once I get in there, you like, he's not doing the things that I've that I seen on TV. You know, they say, this is what they say. They say, everybody know this saying, when you're on that road and, and you're looking over that fence, you know, the, the grass looks so green, but when you get inside that fence, it's brown as hell. So, <laughs> you know, something you might see on tape or something you think is there inside the ring with me, it's not there. And then I'm touching you, like, it's ugly in there, you know. It, it, it's Saturday night, it's, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Do you just do you just like adjust 
to do you adjust what the guy is trying to do or do you just make him adjust what you're doing um i was blessed with the ability to to to, to adjust to anything that come come my way you know i've been, I've been boxing for so long i've seen so many styles um you know and i stay calm and, and once i make my adjustments you know we we go from there how long does it usually take? A round, two rounds? It really, sometimes it don't take that long. Really? You know, if you, if you're not on my level, then it, it's gonna show. It's gonna show. You don't know yet if he is or not. You never know what he brings to the table. I know a lot of people think I'm just overlooking this guy. No, I'm not. I respect every boxer with with 110 percent. He was a former world champion, world-class fighter. Um, he fought at 140. He's coming down and wait. Um, I, I know what I'm going up against. You know, you don't. They don't give you wins in boxing. You win for a victory. So, so he's 37 and one, and his only loss is a is to a now champion or what? Katelnik. So. So what I'm saying, I know what I'm going against. You think he knows what he's going against? Every, I mean, anybody who's fighting Adrian Brown know what they're going against. Come on, man, I'm the, I'm the best boxer in this era. Like I said, I really don't know this guy's name, but he probably can tell you my middle name. <laughs> Any predictions or anything? Or? I don't make predictions. I don't. I don't do none of that. I just come. I just perform. I love to entertain. I'm not just a professional fighter. I I am a professional entertainer too as well. I love to entertain. I love to put on the show. But Saturday night, you know, um, I've been doing this for a long time. I don't know. Uh, no, nobody noticed or. You know, I'm a bank robber. You know, Saturday night I will be robbing a bank. I'm a legal bank robber. You know, that that's 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 what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rob the bank. You gotta explain that one to me. I mean, you know, the way I make these fights look. I mean, you don't think I'm robbing the bank? He's the bank. <laughs> you know, they, they you know they just giving away money. They just giving. <laughs> this is easy money because you're gonna make it look easy. <laughs> of course, of course. Adrian, do you sometimes wonder, uh, when I got a chance to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you in HBO, and actually, you're you're a good guy, you know, I got to know that side of you, um, but sometimes, do you think sometimes the persona, the glasses, the whole thing, kind of throws people off that they don't take you seriously? I, I know, I know they don't sometimes, but that's okay, that's okay, you know, I was always told if, if everybody like you, then somebody's lying. Mm -hmm. Somebody's lying. You know, you're gonna have, you're gonna have ones that like you and you're gonna have ones that dislike you. But, you show no emotion to it. You love everybody. I love all my haters, I love all the ones that love me. I remember before the DeMarco fight, uh, he was. People were saying that the only way that he had a shot at beating you was to come at you, and you didn't seem like you, you didn't shy away from it, but you would rather not do it. But yet, yeah, that's what you wound up doing. Do you see him having like the same approach that? Uh, this guy is going to do whatever he wants. I don't worry. One thing you you got guys come going into fights worrying about what the other guy is going to do. You never know, you know, because in boxing, sometimes people it's only quite few who can stick to a game plan. You know, a lot of fighters come in with a game plan, get hit, then they go to what they know. Mm -hmm. But um, if he come in with a game plan, that's cool. But I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna do what Adrian Brown do, and let's get the victory. I'm gonna do whatever I got to do to get the victory. 
I don't care if he come at me. I don't care if he try to try to run from me. I don't care what he try to do. I will be ready for it. I can take it to whatever level. Do you come in with a game plan or, or not really? Of course I come in with a game plan. Um, get the victory. Do what I gotta do is get it done. I got you. If I if I gotta if I gotta bite down and throw some shots, takes a shot, take a shot to give three. I will do it. I will do whatever it takes to get, you know. You're not taking three to get one, though, right? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> I don't even know who. Name somebody who, who hit me three times. Sig, uh, significant shot. Right. <laughs> you know. Actually, you admitted that a couple of days ago. Some guys you have know. hit you, and you've. Actually, you probably are a little bit tougher than you give three. yourself credit for. Three. I said three. Front three shots, yeah. I said three. Did DeMarco hit you with a shot? Right? Oh, yeah. Body hey, shot. Uh. De Leon and Terrence. I don't even remember his last name. <laughs> but you know, they hit me with some nice shots. Nice shots. Solid shots. It's okay. This is boxing. Am I a fan of getting hit? Am, am I a fan of letting a sweaty man touch me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you've probably been asked a lot. Is there one guy that you really want to fight? That's not the question. The question is, is, is who is going to step up and fight me? Just, you know, who would want to take take that risk? It, when when they're not even at, at their superstardom yet, who would want to who want to get knocked back down after after they didn't work so hard to build themselves up? Who would want to who? Okay. Well, if the money was right, I would think somebody would want to take that chance, right? Uh, I don't know no young fighter who's willing to take that chance. I don't know an older vet, veteran who's willing to take that chance. The veteran, his, his problem will probably be, I'm not going to mess with that young lion. He might hurt me. The young fighter's like, I haven't even made it made it yet why would I why would I do this this early in my career so that's a lose lose situation I, but but me I, it really don't matter veterans young fighters you know they're all dead man is this your first time in Atlantic City yeah so it's time now you haven't had a chance to see the town at all yet so no I did a couple of shots yesterday on um down on the beach Oh, okay. A little bit of shopping, so wasn't too bad. Nice to be out. Okay. So, what do you need to do to beat Adrian Burner? Well, there's a couple of different options. I could outwork him, outpoint him. Well, the main goal is um, come over here, and make a big statement, and knock him out. It seems like, uh, judging by what you've been saying, like leading up to the fight, this is kind of I don't know, almost personal for you. Well, that's not really personal. I'd I'm quite calm, but then he was all disrespectful at uh, the press conference. I bit a little bit, give it a little bit back, he didn't seem to like that. So I can get personal if he wants it to. What did you say that was disrespectful? Oh, he was called, I think he was called me Kevin, Cabbage Ed, <laughs> a few things. Called me ugly, you know. But you just gotta take it. This is the type of character he is. Yeah, I guess, I guess he's kind of known for talking trash. Yeah, he's a trash talker. Bit of a bully, to be honest, but what we need to do. I'd like to give him a smack in the mouth, but I'll wait till Saturday night. Do you think like it's all an act, though? I mean, more than just... Well, it must be an act. You can't act like uh, all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have no friends, but... 
I don't know, he's got a, a good following, so he's got good talent in the ring, and um, there's no need to act like outside, to be honest. Do you have a lot of fans coming over? Yeah, we've got plenty of all arriving tonight, so it should be a good atmosphere, and you know, by the end of the night, all the fans will be appreciating my my skills and my talent when I defeat uh, the next American big thing, as he's supposed to be called. So, how did you get your start in boxing? I mean, I know you started like at AJ, but like, why did your dad push you into it, or did you just? No, I think I was um, just watching TV one night. I think it was. I think it was something like Ben and Eubank that I was nine years of age and I just wanted to join, I wanted to go. My grandpa took me and just stuck at it after that. I mean, did you play any other sports before that, like, you know, like soccer, football, whatever? No, no, only in school, a bit of rugby, a bit of football, but only ever competitive as boxing. What, what is your, um, your hometown like? Is it a big city, small town? No, it's a little town of Valleys, really, on um, and the hills, I don't see many mountains around here, do you? <laughs> it's mountains and uh, little valleys like that. Oh, okay. I'll come over and give us a visit. What did your uh, parents do for a living? Uh, my dad worked down in the mines when I was a young boy. He's still working now. My mum just looked after us. Was your dad a fighter as well, or no? No. Oh, okay. No one in the family. Your brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got uh, three other brothers. One done a bit of boxing, but okay. he got fed up with losing. What's that? He got fed up with losing. <laughs> <laughs> Would you kind of you take to it right away? Don't bother. I don't want to see okay. that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? Sorry. Did you take to it right away yourself? Yeah, of course I took to it right away. I only lost um, six fighters in amateur. I think uh, about eight yard amateur fights. Lost six. And I lost three of them in my first six fights, so I had an eight yard amateur fights and only lost three then. So uh, yeah, because I took right, I was always winning, always doing well. And I went on to professional level at the age of 18, and I've only lost one since, so like I say, I've only lost uh, seven fights in 23 years of boxing. It's not too bad. Yeah. Why, um, Chris, why drop down the weight? I miss, most guys move up. Well, what was at the time I was fighting at lightweight anyway, wasn't getting no shots, and they offered the shot that I'm um, in Bay for the light welterweight title. Like I said, I wasn't getting nothing at lightweight, so I also accepted and won it, and I also defended it. Okay. So then why drop back down? Well, like I said, it wasn't my weight anyway. Oh. Well. So well, I, I won at the tournament then called Prize Fighter in the UK by Matchroom. Okay. That was a ten stone free, believe it or not. When it won that, and then teamed up with Guy Lockett, then and we dropped on the lightweight. We just went on from there. I mean, did you know all along that lightweight was? Yeah, I knew that. I knew, but my, my my breaks were coming at light welterweight. They offered, like I said, after I lost the world title, I hadn't boxed for a year, and then the price fighter option came up. So when you know it went so long, you don't say no. So I said, yeah, jumped in there, I won it, and after that, I just knuckled down and concentrated properly on my career then. Did you not fight for you on purpose, or did you? Oh, no, what was, it was just politics really, I was with, um, with Frank Warren, and with Joe Calzaghi left him, we was all in the camp under contracts, and there was no, no one could get no fight, so whoever was in the camp was suffering for it. Oh, I got you. Kevin, how much more discipline <coughs> do you have to have to stage in your career than you were on, I did some research there, and you, uh, <laughs> You'd like to throw down a pint or two back in the day. More water. <laughs> 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 yeah, like I say, I'll tell you the truth. I was, oh, I, I know it's bad to be saying, but two weeks before Price Fighter, I was drinking booze then out on the town with the boys. Drunk, don't know why. It's just the way life I was living. And after that, like I said, I teamed up with Guy Lockett and joined up with him. He said, no nonsense with me. And just stop, like I say, I don't drink now. Last time I think it was Christmas time and we found out with this fight. Come over here for five weeks, dedicated everything towards this fight. After Price I was 29 and this, you realise this is my last chance, it's now or never for me when I'm 29 years of age. I, I went out quite easily and think I was drinking a couple of weeks before. It shows I've got talent, but um, i got to be dedicated as well to get to the top. 
a little bit of the Ricky Hatton school. I think it was a bit worse than him, to be honest. I think he stopped when he was fighting. I seem, I seem to keep going. <laughs> a little bit of the Ricardo Mayuri school. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know when to stop, that was my problem. But, you know, you so live, you live and learn, don't you? A little bit of the Ricardo Mayuri school. Then. Yeah. So, without the cigarettes? No, I never smoked a pack in my life. Okay. Did somebody have to like talk you into stopping, or I mean, Gary like lay down the law to you, or did you just yeah, well, your own? I knew it was time. I mean, for years, my my dad always went on to me, but people can tell you so far they don't know what you're doing behind closed doors, and when when you're not when you're not around, you know, they can tell you, and you say yeah, 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 and you you go and do it anyway. But um, like I say, what price fight it was a turning point for me. It got me back on on the boxing mat, so I was speaking then. It just all changed for me when I was a guy and then there was no drinking six to eight weeks before fights. We had two six rounders I think, British, European. Just going from strength to strength. We got a great nutritionist on board now, Renzo. And it's just just been great. You know, that helps a lot, obviously like when I was out drinking like that, I'd be absolutely killing myself to make the weight and uh to come back down. And that now and obviously is just been over here eating, dieting, training. Everything's perfect. Okay. Did you give up drinking totally or just for when you were Yeah, obviously, when obviously now we'll obviously all go for a pint now on Saturday night and celebrate my victory. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> after the you know, just walk first. Yeah, you know, after we were celebrating then, as soon as we got uh, confirmation of the next fight, we'll back into camp again, like it shouldn't be. Kevin, it didn't get to a dangerous point, it was just something social, right? Oh, no, it's only, only weekends, only probably one night, Saturday night or something. Okay. You know, when you're single, I said we get all your mates are going out and you sat in here, saying, oh, I'm going out as well. You know, only ever one night, we wouldn't, obviously, like I said, we train all week. I don't know, just one leads to two and two leads to 20. <laughs> <laughs> and you wake up in the morning and think, yeah, what happened there? <laughs> How did I get out to get home? <laughs> you know? <laughs> We've all been there, I'm sure of it. Or is it just me? <laughs> Have you watched tapes of his fights? Yeah, of course. Um, he watched a few. Um, he's always the highly talented, no, I'm going to deny that. But uh, some of the tactics of the opponents are just baffling. You know, when you box DeMarco, DeMarco just walk forward, head force, n throw no punches at all, then Bruno pick him apart and hit him. Why he was boxing like that, I haven't got a clue. And one thing too, I won't be. Plenty of movement in this fight, let my own punches go. So no intentions of staying there and trading with him. Just I'll stand there and trade, yeah, but I won't be standing just standing and punch me. Like tomorrow was from what, probably one punch out of ten. You no, know, if I if you see any videos me you know I'm like, you know, I'll go talk to him and I will scrap with anybody. <coughs> right, and, and just gonna stand there and let him punch me and just take them all. If anything I let him stand there and I'll be punching him. I'll stand and trade with anybody if they want. Mm -hmm. Was that, you were surprised the way DeMarco fought him? Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. He's a, he's a talented boxer and he was just played into his game. Yeah. What's his game, Gavin? What's he trying to do? Who now? Bruno. Yeah. Tries to get into head, I think, at the first, but <coughs> it wasn't quite easy going anyway. He can just say what he wants to me. <coughs> he said a couple of things at the press conference, like I say, answered back. He didn't seem to know what to say. And then outside, he, none of it was about, then he started chopping off her again. I said, oh, he said, what did he say to me? Um, oh, are you ready? Are you ready? So I looked at him like that, and his, he had his trousers around his ankles, sort of thing. I said, why don't you pick your fucking trousers up, you knob? He looked at me like, I was confused, dropped his phone on the floor. <laughs> Every time he didn't know him, got in the van, one of his bouncers had to pick it up for him. He just a bit flustered, so if he wants to play my games, I'll play him with him. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that, I said, tell me the truth. If that's how I know it's small, but <laughs> that's, where we, that's how we speak in the valleys. <laughs> in the ring, what's his dream? What's, what's his dream in the ring? Um, like I say, I think he tries to get in your head. I think he might have done that to Marco, I'm not sure. And he just 
totally lost it and didn't go in with his normal game plan. <coughs> but he's obviously a great counter puncher. That he leans back. He wants to come in rushing in for, for his uppercuts. And obviously a sharp left hook. He's got uppercut left hook. It's his main game. While, while I watch him, he leans back. He hasn't got really got a main jab. So I'm happy to stand on the outside and jab his head off. He wants all night. I got a great jab. I know I'm only small, but I got a great jab myself. Is he the best guy you fought? People keep asking me. I was there for. Um, it's hard to say before. Right. On paper, he is, yeah, but um, I'll tell you with the verdict on Saturday night. Right. It's only after I've been in the ring with him that I know. What's your experience against someone like Corey? Like, how does that help you with someone that from? Like I said, I don't seem to get two phase. I'm not nervous for this fight at all. I'm going in, going to do my own game plan, my own strategy. So that, that's a key thing. I know, like I say, a lot of the other people I think have got uh, little nerves get to them, not going to do what they want to do. It's one thing for sure I'm going to win. Even if I have uh, one point of thing that people say is all over me, I'm still going to be firing bombs back, you know, I'm not going to get phased by nothing. If I'm going to lose, I'm not just going to run away, I'm going to get knocked out. I'm not bothered, to be honest. I'm going to go on my shield, and I believe I can win this fight. And, Give him the hardest test of his life. Very good, Gavin. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem.